This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. The views conveyed by the guests on this program do not necessarily represent the views of the host or owners of the Doggy Diva Show and do not necessarily constitute endorsement of products. Medical information shared by the guests on this program are those of the guests and are for informational purposes only. They should not replace the medical advice of your veterinarian. Hi, this is Susan Marie from the Doggy Diva Show. This episode features Kim Gablin, Paw Ambassador of Bill Jack Foods, sharing helpful ways that pet parents can celebrate the holidays safely with their pets. That's what's on our show, so let's get started. Come here, babies. It's time for a treat. The Doggy Diva Show. Here's national award-winning author and animal advocate, Susan Marie. Hi, welcome to the Doggy Diva Show, the show for animal lovers. I'm your host, Susan Marie, and as always, I'm joined by my canine co-hosts, the Doggy Divas themselves. Thank you for joining us today as we bring you the experts in the pet and animal world right to you. Contact us at thedoggydiva.com. That's the D-O-G-G-Y-D-I-V-A dot com. We love hearing from you. So go grab a cup of coffee and your pet's favorite treat, and we'll be back in just a moment. Need the perfect gift for the cat lover in your life? Check out ComfortDiva.com. We have cat-tastic gifts to make you smile, like cat-themed tote bags, kitchen towels, quirky mugs, and stylish t-shirts. For holiday gifts or anytime, ComfortDiva.com has it all. Treat the cat lady in your life to something awesome and save 20% with coupon MEOW20. Visit ComfortDiva.com today because every cat lover deserves a little comfort. ComfortDiva.com, where comfort meets catitude. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. As a pet parent, I know the importance of celebrating the holidays with our beloved fur kid family members safely and while enjoying our yummy holiday meals to ensure that our pets can enjoy their holiday meals too, ones that are healthy and safe for our pets. With some helpful advice on how pet parents can celebrate safely and have a healthy holiday with our pets, we have Kim Gablin, former chief marketing officer at Bill Jack and now the official Ambassador, very important. So we would like to welcome back Kim to the show. Hey, Kim, welcome back. Hey, thank you so much for having me. This is such a fun thing to talk about. The holidays are such a special time of year and celebrating them with our pets makes them even more special. Yeah, you know, there's so much excitement going on, right? With our humans and our furry family members. There's so much hustle and bustle, like so much exciting things going on, like decorating and possible guests. But but that does mean that there are maybe a few more hazards around than, than usual. And so it's a, it's a good time to kind of think about um, what kind of holiday hazards are around. And I, and I think about them kind of in three ways, too. Uh, three Fs, right? So festive decorations, food, and feelings. So oh, I love that. Three. <laughs> I love that. So what are some things for pet parents to keep in mind to have a safe and happy holiday with their pets, keeping these three holiday hazards in mind? Yeah, you know, I think as we think about the, this first one, festive decorations, I mean, and, and you know, really, as we're starting, like, you know, through Thanksgiving, from Thanksgiving, through Hanukkah and Christmas and Diwali, through all the, and even through New Year's, all these decorations are kind of around and, and all these things are happening. So, you know, first of all, it's really important to be careful around the tree, right? There's a lot of times we're putting up a tree and there's a lot of proper precautions we can take. So certainly there's electric cords out there. Um, we want to make sure that they're kind of hidden if we can to prevent chewing or tripping or any kind of electrical hazard, keeping those light strings and breakable ornaments off the lower branches. You know, particularly um, if you have a bigger dog, you might want to keep it up, you know, a little higher uh, and kind of keep that temptation out of their way, you know, because a lot of times our pets like to grab things or maybe knock them off the tree. They're kind of sharp, you know, twinkly and and pretty. Uh, And certainly tinsel is one of those things that is a little bit more dangerous, right? That if, if they get into the tinsel and, and they swallow it, that's kind of a bad thing. So you want to make sure that uh, maybe you think about 
doing a garland instead, and that would be a little bit safer on the tree. And even the tree water can be a problem, right? Um, there might be additives in the water or sap that leaks from the tree into the water. So drinking that can make your pets sick. So make sure you're covering that bowl with a plastic bag or a tree skirt or something else that kind of keeps them out of it. Um, you know, and, and another way to be safe around that is to just go faux, right? To, to have a fake tree. That's another way to kind of keep your, your pets a little safer from getting into those needles and into that water. We also, you know, of course, if you think about other things that are around the house, right? So candles, it's a big candle holiday. Um, so you want to be able to kind of avoid tempting your fur babies with candles. Sometimes scented candles can also attract them a little bit more. It could be that a, a tail wagging, you know, on with a candle on the table can be very dangerous. So it's important to kind of think about um, where you're putting those or, you know, again, use um, faux candles where possible. Certainly, there's lots of plants that we have out like mistletoe and holly and poinsettias, and they can, you know, potentially cause vomiting or maybe gastrointestinal issues or even um, cardiovascular problems like with mistletoe. So you're going to want to kind of keep those out of reach. And, you know, don't forget, sometimes they they may lose a leaf or, you know, something may die and that may fall off and then your dog may be able to get into it that way as well. So again, kind of keep them out of of harm's way. And um, and even gift wrap, you know, I always say no bows for the Bow Wows. So, you know, what, you know, what are you going to give your dog this holiday season? If you're thinking about wrapping it up and doing something special for them, make sure that there's no ribbon or decorations on there that they could get into. Uh, and then be sure to throw away all of that wrapping paper. You know, um, even, you know, a lot of times, you know, I don't know, do the girls get into the gifts at your house? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, so that can also be a little bit of a risk, right? So, you know, making sure that you're, you know, you're only putting out what you need to put out or, you know, maybe you're only putting the clothes out so that if they do get into a box, it's not a big deal. But, you know, sometimes we give chocolate for the holidays or things things that smell. Uh, and so we don't want to be putting those out and, and risking again, tempting our, our best friends to be able to open those up and kind of get into them when we weren't planning on that. Absolutely. And getting into the foods, is it safe, do you think, for pet parents to celebrate the holidays by sharing human foods from the table? I know we all want to kind of lean in or maybe Aunt Melly might lean in and say, here's a little piece of turkey or here's a little potato. What do you? What are your feelings on this? Or you, what's your advice on this? Yeah, you know, certainly when we think about it, it's, it seems like oh, it'd be a great idea, right, to share our holiday meal with with our pets. But you know, it may seem kind of innocent, but you have to be careful not to ruin the holiday with a sick dog or an emergency trip to the vet. So many of the things that we eat or drink, or even like snacks we have out for people to eat over the holidays, can be you know anywhere from nauseating to your pet to uh, to dangerous to toxic. And so, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of us have heard of some of these, right? So it's alcoholic beverages are not good for them. They cannot metabolize those very easily. You know, chocolate, caffeine and coffee, you know, grapes and raisins, onions uh, are not good for your pet. Avocados and macadamia nuts, um, candy and gum, or, or now even I'm seeing a lot, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of peanut butter containing xylitol, which is an artificial sweetener that I have personal experience with <laughs> that I would not recommend, right, um, that your dog get into. And then, you know, even our turkey and sweet potatoes and Mashed potatoes. I mean, we think, oh, that sounds great. We'll just give them some of them. But you know, we there's fat. There's fat in the skin of the turkey and um, the butter and the seasoning and the sugar. That can all kind of wreak havoc with your dog's digestive system. It can even, you know, in extreme cases, cause pancreatitis. And so that's, you know, it seems like it's a great idea to be able to give them some of that food off the table. But but you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. And I totally agree because I have to tell you, on Christmas or on any holiday, I certainly don't want to spend it in the animal ER. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and it's really, it's really important. You know, it's great to take some precautions too, to make sure that if something does happen or if your dog does get into something that you've got that kind of together, right? So be sure you have your veterinarian and your nearest emergency vet in your cell phone. So I always recommend that. You and I have talked about that before. We've talked about this, yeah. It's not just for the holiday season, right? But it can really help you be prepared if you need Mm -hmm. them quickly. And, you know, I I know the name of my vet, but I don't always know the name of the nearest emergency vet near me. So being able to put them in there, put them in there as your in case of emergency person, your ICE vet, that's a really fast way for you to find them without knowing their name. So that's a really great way to do that. You know, and snacking, you know, I know sometimes unintentionally your guests have good intentions, but they want to give your pet something, you know, kind of fun to chew on and, oh, let's treat the dog. She's so cute. 
you know, I always suggest putting out a bowl of treats and maybe you could put out a little note, right? I, I like to put out a little note because this way it does two things, right? It lets your guests know here's something you can give them that's safe. And oh, by the way, this is all they're going to get because we don't want to overfeed them or make them sick, right? By giving them too many things. So you can give them like a little, you know, being put a little note on there like Sassy's Holiday Snack Bowl, you know, and let people know don't share these human, don't share human treats with her, but instead give her, you know, give her one of these treats. And once they're gone, her feast is over. Thanks for keeping her jolly, you know? So there's a great I way to love that. <laughs> What it's a great idea. You know, it's a it's a fun way that everybody can at least feel like they can give something to your to your sweet pets, right? So, but but at least you can be safe and and have some fun with it. I do. I like it because you know what? When people come to your house and they see you know your pets and and I have very friendly pets, so they'll go wandering around, mm-hmm. and everyone wants to like give them a little something because they also know how to look the right way, so people want. Oh give yes, <laughs> this is such a great idea, Kim, because then. The people don't feel guilty because they're giving your pet something and you don't feel guilty because, you know, okay, well, they can give them like, you know, a little bell jack treat or whatever the treat may be. And, you know, it's safe and you know that the dog, you know, your dog or cat doesn't get sick. So, yes, yeah, that's a great idea. And, you know, and the same thing can happen with dinner, right? So if you do want to give them something special, something easy, something that you know is going to be okay for them, then I would really recommend, you know, find a tasty canned dog food for the occasion. You know, like, you know, Bill Jack makes a variety of canned dog foods um, and chunks and pate. But like, you know, for example, we have Harvest Feast turkey and sweet potatoes, or we've got, you know, pate platters, duck and pumpkin pate. So, you know, you can use it as a topper. So you're, you know, you're not going to, a little bit of that isn't going to upset the meal. And that'll really kind of give them something special. And, and you know, and, and then at least they'll feel like they're participating, right? That they got a little bit of turkey too. Um, maybe not the same as your turkey, but just something special that you can do that they can have a little bit of holiday fun as well. I like that. And and I don't know if you remember, we kind of talked about when you talked about the gift bags. My sister always gives the girls Bill Jack treats for Christmas. Uh-huh. So we put we don't put the bags out. We have these... They're like, they're Christmas boxes, but there really is nothing in them. They're big, you know, decorative boxes that we put uh-huh. under the tree. So it looks like we have things under there. So we had put the gifts out Christmas Eve. And I think I sent you the picture when we had Olive. And mm-hmm. her head and her little body <laughs> <laughs> was just three quarters of the way in the bag trying to pull the Bill Jack treats out. And we're going, no. <laughs> but that's cute because they do. They love that type of stuff. So you can always have a little bit special stuff for your pups so that they could feel like they're a part of the celebration. That's a great idea. Absolutely. And then, you know, don't forget dessert. You can always do some treats for dessert. So there's so there's some great ways, right? Whether it's Bojack or whether it's an, another brand. I mean, it's important for you to kind of yes. feed them something that is um, for your dog, that is made for your dog, that is not going to kind of drive that intestinal upset. So those are great tips, and let's take a quick break here. When we return, let's continue talking with Kim about some pet-safe holiday tips. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone. Susan Marie here to tell you about the award-winning three-book series, The Doggy Diva Diaries. It is a trilogy of heartwarming and inspirational stories about Miss Olive, a lonely little rescue pup, hoping to find her forever family and friends and a life filled with love. In this series, Miss Olive learns that it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, it's the kindness and love you have on the inside that counts. Available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other online booksellers, And please visit us at thedoggydiva.com for more information. Thank you, everyone. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> back everyone i'm here with kim gablin she is the ambassador at bill jack foods and kim 
Let's continue our talk about the things that, you know, are holiday hazardous, we'll call it. Um, the third item that you had mentioned was feelings. What do we need to be thinking about regarding feelings during the season? Yeah, you know, I know this might be not be something that you've got top of mind, but you know, with all the hustle and bustle going on, your dog may feel a little more stressed, right? A little more left out and, and certainly all unintentionally. But when the holidays is happening, you know, we're decorating, we're cooking, we're baking, we're entertaining guests, we're leaving the house and going to parties and shopping and stuff. So there might be a some, certain someone around the house who maybe misses, <laughs> misses hanging out with you <laughs> with some peace and quiet on the sofa or maybe taking a long walk, you know, or maybe it's starting to get chilly outside for some of us, right? So um, maybe you're not taking those long walks like you used to. So it really, the thing to think about for feelings for your dog is, you know, really to be intentional about your time together. Maybe you don't take a long walk like you were, but but don't skip a walk, right? Try to get out there and have them, you know, be able to get out there and be active. Um, maybe have the kids or your significant other or friend, give them a little extra love and attention while you're managing, you know, tasks, maybe while you're baking or cooking, you know, if the kids are chatting with you, maybe they can give a little extra special, you know, attention to your dogs. And certainly, you know, watch your baby, right? Watch your fur baby. If you're seeing that they're kind of stressed by what's going on, you know, maybe there's a bunch of people over um, and you're not really sure, they're not really sure, they're feeling kind of uncomfortable or they feel like there's too much noise. You know, the kids are over, they're running around and kind of just horse playing like they normally do. Maybe they'd be better off in a better, in a quieter place, like maybe in the bedroom or maybe in their crate, you know, with the radio or the TV playing during a party. Or, you know, if they're, if it really stresses them out, maybe they're better off over a friend's house uh, and, and maybe, you know, be able to make that happen. So it's one of those things where you don't always notice because you know you're so busy getting everything else ready but if you know that your dog is is a little more stressed when people come over that could be a good thing and and certainly when people come over take a few minutes and properly introduce the guest um, that's either maybe staying with you or coming over for a party Um, and that kind of helps everybody feel a little more comfortable right not not everybody's a dog person everybody might have a different level of comfort with a dog or some people are more comfortable around big dogs than little dogs and vice versa so being able to have your dog just spend a minute with them and the guest and let them know, you know, and make sure that your dog's not jumping or, you know, kind of you know, that you're keeping doors closed, making sure that maybe things like purses are put somewhere where the dog can't get to them or put up high medications, you know, those kinds of things, right? Um, no gum in the jacket pockets. So those kinds of things that dogs can get into can cause problems. So that's a really important thing to do. And, you know, maybe even take some time and practice meeting people. You know, maybe you need to ring the doorbell, have the kids go outside, ring the doorbell, and then, you know, um, have the dog just practice like what it's like to have people come over. Because, you know, if they're not used to doing that and you don't have people over too often, that's a great way to be able to kind of think about them and have them feel a little more comfortable when all of this stuff is, is going on. And um, when you're thinking about their feelings, you might want to um, just spend a little bit of time at the end of a long day, right? Spend that time, get in a comfortable place, you know, give them that that the kind of petting and scratching that they enjoy. Um, let them know how much, you know, you really love and appreciate them at this time. And just, you know, spend a little time with them, right? And you'll be surprised at how much better, not just they will feel, but I think you'll feel that better as well, right? It kind of helps both of you to spend a little bit of that time together at the end of all this kind of hustle and bustle and make sure that they're feeling comfortable and happy. And I can't agree with you more, you know, and I think one of the things that we all may be guilty of as we're in this hustle and bustle of the holidays, whether it be that we're shopping, cooking, visiting with relatives, visiting with friends. Sometimes our little fur kids are the ones that kind of like go, hey, wait a minute, what happened? You know, you usually Mm -hmm. come home and do this, and but our minds are elsewhere. So I think that this is a really, really, really important point that you brought out. And um, I think that uh, pet parents out there are going, I'm going to take a little extra time to make sure that, you know, I sit with my pup, I take a little extra walk, or I make sure that I have enough toys to keep them occupied when people are over. Mm -hmm. And if there's just like a little extra scratch under the neck and behind the ears, you're right. That goes a long way. So those, and those were great, great tips. The uh, the three tips are absolutely timely and timeless at the same time. Well, and it doesn't have to take a lot of time, right? It's an extra five minutes here, yes. an extra five minutes there. So like, you know, again, I don't want it to be adding more stress to everyone's kind of day, but it, that last couple of minutes can really make a big difference. It is. And it's something that it kind of like 
We don't think about it, and it's something we could just sit on the couch, and they'll come. I know that mine do. They come jumping up. Everyone mm-hmm. comes up, and because um, we have all very pet-friendly furniture, and they come <laughs> jumping up. So everybody gets like, and once they get, each one gets acknowledged, they're okay. They go away. They go to their little bed, or they go, you know, with their toy or something. So it's just that psychological like a, a little hug saying, hey, I'm home, and or hey, I know I'm cooking, but let's stop and do this together, and just like things like that. So very, very important. So Kim, where can the listeners go to find out more information about holiday safety, healthy holidays, and of course, Bill Jack? Yeah, I know I would say start at our website at billjack.com. It's B I L dash J A C dot com. That's a great place. You can um, type in holiday safety and they'll get lots of tips to be able to kind of talk about some of the things that we talked about today. And then there's also information there about where to find Bill Jack, you know, at your stores, places like PetSmart and Pet Supermarket and Tractor Supply on Chewy.com. And then, you know, um, you can also come out and interact with us. We love to see you out on social media and hear about how, you know, how's your holiday safety been and what tips did you learn about? Come tell us about it, you know, out on Facebook or TikTok or Instagram. We're, we're out across that whole group of, uh, of social media and we love to interact with folks. And, and, and again, we all learn and hear how to take better care of our pets. Exactly. That's very helpful. And Kim, as always, I want to thank you for sharing such helpful advice on ways pet parents can celebrate the holidays safely together with their beloved fur kids. And all of us at the Doggy Diva Show are wishing you, your family, and the Bill Jack team a very safe and happy holiday season. And to all of you pet parents out there, happy holidays, everyone. Enjoy them safely with your beloved fur kids. Happy Happy holidays. holidays. We'll be back in just a moment. Begging to hear more of your favorite show? (laughs) Full episodes of all our shows are available on demand. Go to PetLifeRadio.com to fetch our entire lineup of possum pet podcasts. Also, dig us up in iHeartRadio and iTunes. Let's talk pets. Live and on demand only from Pet Life Radio. We would like to thank our guests this week. And also, as our doggy divas always say, please love your pets because they love you unconditionally. And please remember to adopt, foster, spay, neuter, and microchip. And as always, please have a great diva week, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Doggy Diva Show. To find out more about Susan Marie and the Doggy Divas, visit them at their website, thedoggydiva.com, and on Facebook at The Doggy Diva Show. Tell your fellow pet parents about it. We look forward to having you join us again for the next episode. See you soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.